Hey everybody, welcome to uh, FTO Nerd Talks. I'm Brett and uh, to joining me today is Brian Lambert from Wingless Entertainment, um, a publisher of J the comic Justice. Number Zero has been out for what, about a year now, I think? Um, little uh, year? Yeah, just a little under a year. Yeah. Yeah. And so um, we're here to talk about the future of Justice and the future of Wingless and welcome, Brian. Oh, good morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure to be able to talk about comics. Um, amid everything that's going on right now. Uh, it's been a pleasure creating justice and trying to, you know, kind of build up this world of, of wingless comics. So it's actually a really great, you know, opportunity. That's awesome. So tell us more about yourself. What's your background? Um, how did you get to this point? Um, I was, I mean, going back as, as far as I can remember, like I always had a comic book in my, uh, in my backpack, but I was also like a jock. So, you know, growing up when I did, it was kind of like, oh man, we're going to hide the comic books, hide our love of D&D &D or whatever else in video games because it wasn't as cool as it is now. Yep. Um, but, you know, that, um, that 90s run of X-Men comics with Jim Lee, just I think for a lot of us, it changed, you know, everything. And then right on the heels of that with Image, um, you know what I mean? Like it, it just really, really made a big impact. So it's something I've always wanted to get into. Um, I started novel writing uh, and I published a few years back my first novel. Um, and that just kind of segued into being able to write comics. You know, it gave me that kind of the platform, kind of the understanding. Um, and, and and so I'm I'm really fortunate in that. Um, obviously, in addition to schooling and really learning the craft and, and really trying to to be as much of a fan creator as I can. That's really cool. So, um, do you remember? You said you're always walking around with a comic in your bag. Um, yeah. Do you remember your first comic? Very first comic. Um, actually, yes, man. So. Um, my brother's still mad at me about it, and my mom is <laughs> mad at both of us for this. But my mom had bought us, and it's before I think I was, you know, born. But the first comic I remember reading or looking at was the uh, Muhammad Ali versus Superman, like the prestige uh, edition, oh, the huge one yeah. with everybody on the background. We still have it, right? It barely has a cover on it. It's all crum <laughs> crum crumpled up. It's it's totally just run through because we didn't have an appreciation of of how amazing that was going to be and how amazing it would be now. Yeah. But um, I. I first wanted to make a hero after I saw Superman with the uh, blue robe on, right? Like, so for me, it was like, hey, wait, Superman with the blue cape? Like, it was, it was amazing. Like, it blew my mind as a kid. And, and from then, I was sold, man. That's awesome. That's such a good book. That's such a good yeah, book. Yeah, right? It really is. You know, I don't, well, obviously, as a kid, I didn't realize the depth to it. Um, yeah. But going back and revisiting it as an adult, and I even did a, um, a little spotlight on my on my Instagram about it, you know, you know, books that change our lives. Um, mm -hmm. Just all the, the, the notes in there and the tones and having Superman get beaten, but he won't, you know, fall. And Ali is the greatest and Superman's, you know, it's just, um, there are just so many levels to it, you know? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So uh, what comics are you reading right now? What, what, how, do, where does the love continue? Um, so Hickman's run on X-Men. I think if anybody is like not at least a fan, even if it's hard to kind of keep up with all of them, um, if you're not a fan, I'd, I don't want to say I don't consider you a fan of comics, but um, I'm going to question your love of, of great storytelling. Um, so, uh, you know, Hickman's run is, is really, really big. Um, I need to get into death metal. I like Dark Knight's metal, but a lot like a lot of those kind of series, sometimes mm -hmm. the endings, uh, you know, they get a little flaky for me. Yeah, I agree. Um, <laughs> um, I'm still, you know, big, big archive stuff. I mean, with writing justice and just having the kind of, um, the stories I'm kind of dealing with, uh, David Hines' run on Spawn, that Armageddon arc, I loved it. And so I'm revisiting that. Um, and a lot of indie stuff, man. There's a, just a ton of really, really good indie stuff out there. Is Nana and um, Crescent City Monsters. Um, yeah. um, there's some stuff from Burning Spear Comics. Uh, they're, they're just, honestly, there are a ton. And I would do, I would, it would be a disservice if I tried to name them all because there are so many. And it's, I'm going to forget somebody and I don't want to. Uh, Constant Hustle's doing some great stuff. Concept Moon Studios is doing some great stuff. You know, um, there's just a ton out there. Yeah. You, you, you just basically named my reading list right now. So, yeah, yes. you're right. <laughs> okay, awesome. Yeah. yeah. No, it's, it, there's some really, really great books. Um, for me, uh, you know, I, I, I just finished maybe a couple weeks ago, Crescent City Monsters number three. Yep. And I love the look of it. I love that noir feeling. I love the fact that it's black and white. Um, there are just a bunch of different ways to, to tell stories now. Um, and I think the availability, obviously, the internet and all these other things have made it possible. And so I really admire when people are kind of stepping out like that. And I see that a lot in the indie community. I use Crescent City Monsters as a, you know, a jumping point. But I feel like a lot of people are doing that. And it's, and it's really great. It's really great to see. Yeah, it is. So um, 
let's talk about justice. Let's break it down. Let's, um, where did you get the idea for justice? Give us just a little teaser. Um, we want people to go download your book and buy number one when it comes out. But um, what's happened so far and what's, what's next? Okay, so um, Justice Zero, which is actually free on uh, winglessent.com um, for download, it, it's, 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 um, it's the start of, of what will be something epic. Uh, and I mean that in terms of, we, you know, the, the battles for good and evil are always there, right? So let, uh, my take is let's, let's do the ultimate one. Let's see how these forces really play out. Let's see how, my opinion of how these forces play out. Let's see, you know, the struggle. Um, I actually, Justice came from, um, I have a, like a love hate with horror movies, right? And horror movies, you get something like, you have something like Exorcist, right? This great, visceral, awesome, amazing movie. But the hero is always some guy that's like, God, please help if you could just, I don't know. Like, and so you got somebody like flying across the walls and like super strength and they're punching them. They got wings, like all these crazy things, right? Um, you know, it brings to my like, mind like the golden child, right? I love Eddie Murphy, right? But he's got like this little dagger and this dude is like a 12 foot bat wing demon, right? And I'm like, well, yep. dang, if, if one side can have these crazy powers, like why can't the other? Like if, if, if we're talking about wars and you know, the Trojan War, War of the Roses, like all these big wars that have lasted for years and years and years, right? It's all this carnage. There are good and bad on both sides. There are these heroes on both sides and it always depends on your perception of things. Um, why not take that back to the like original war and the ripples that still go through there? To me, that's always been a really, really engaging idea, a really, really engaging idea of being in the most perfect place ever and still not being satisfied. Um, Dante's Inferno is obviously a very, very big um, part of, of, of my mythos and, and, and how it came to be. Dogma, uh, just, you know, a few other things that I think are just pretty awesome and explore. It, it gives me a chance, if no one else, to explore some of the things that I wonder about religion and about science and about human nature and, and, and about, you know, God's nature in relation to how humans can understand it, if you believe that. And if you don't, it's there for that, too. You know, um, yeah. I don't I also don't just um, because it's based in an Abrahamic tradition. That doesn't mean that's all that it covers. I, I, I love the Marvel theory of where you have Norse gods and you have like all the high founders get together. and Just all these these different things where where you can see how cultures are so closely related, yet so far apart in beautiful ways. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I'm reading issue zero. Um, it, I, I totally agree. Everything you said came through in issue zero, um, where you don't have to be religious to get what's going on. You don't have to know everything about an Abrahamic religion to know what's going on. And this, the, I can't wait to see where it goes, man. I can't wait to see where it goes. Um, so speaking of where it's going, you're getting ready for a Kickstarter campaign. Um, yes. How can people support that? Okay, so uh, our Kickstarter campaign is uh, scheduled for June 12th. It should uh, open on June 12th, 9 a.m. West Coast time. So, you know, 12 East Coast time. Um, there will be multiple tiers, multiple chances for, for just your casual reader to, to pick up the PDF. Uh, for your crazy wingless fan, which I love you guys. If, there, if there's anybody that's a crazy wingless fan, I love you guys. Um, <laughs> Um, so get some collector editions, get some signed prints. Um, I have a really amazing art team, including um, Gladeson, Ribeiro, uh, Fabio Smile, um, Nestor Rajula. Uh, I just, uh, room makers, my letterers, they put together a really, they put together a really great project. I'd like to be like, oh man, I did everything and I should, no, but really, um, I, I'm just fortunate that people understand my crazy scribbles and my crazy notes and they can bring this vision to life. Um, there are going to be as we expand the what's what's what my writing partner and my head of creative development for wingless uh, comics calls the wingverse um as we expand you're going to get to see some more characters um a fan favorite caliburn is going to have a backup feature cool. uh, malachi bailey's own her is also going to have a backup feature we're really expanding the universe to, to try and show and highlight the the, the diversity of character um, the diversity of ideas and storytelling, I really, we view it as like a palette, right? Like a palette, you can have blue, but you've got all these different shades of blue. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what we're trying to do with the wing verse and, and just bring a, a lot of different things to the table. So like I said, on um, June 12th, it's going to be across all social uh, media, uh, obviously. We're going to have links everywhere. I'm going to be screaming from rooftops. Um, um, we, we've got a lot of really, really cool surprises in store for all the fans and all the people who just, just, Stop in to check it out. 
Yeah, if you've been following um, Wingless Entertainment on Instagram, at least, um, you got some really cool Kickstarter rewards. I saw a really cool statue. Yeah, uh, you know, I'm actually, I, I think I'm more geek than anybody for the statue. I'm not going <laughs> to lie. Um, that is uh, Jaleelson Santos. He's a, an extremely, extremely talented sculptor. He put his heart and soul into it. Um, it it's amazing. Um, it's actually cool. getting shipped to me right now, the, 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 the first one. Um, that the pictures were taken of is getting shipped to me now. I can't wait to put it on my desk. I'm like a little kid checking for the mail every day. <laughs> um, it's rendered really well. We're actually, um, well, you know what? I'll, I'll give you the exclusive. We're yeah. actually getting one done of Caliburn as well as we speak. Uh, and awesome. it will, uh, the previews will debut on the, um, on the Kickstarter. You'll be able to see the process as it kind of develops. Um, that's gonna, it's going to be ready to ship by the end of the campaign as well. That's so um, awesome. Yeah, yeah. So we're adding a few things. Like I said, it's, it's some little Easter eggs and a couple other things. They're going to be some uh, really, really present, pleasant surprises for everyone. That's really cool. I'm, I'm excited for, for Justice to continue. And i am also been so excited to see um, the previews of her kind of coming out little by little. I can't yeah. wait to, I'm going to have to talk to Malachi at some point to get him on here because mm. I'm, I'm excited about that. Yeah, yeah. No, you know, Malachi is... Man, his his energy. We're we're, we're kind of yin and yang sometimes, and and sometimes I'm just really like, yeah, we need to do the work. And Malachi's, oh my God, Brian, we're doing. You know, his energy is is so infectious and it's so great. And he's so passionate about the story. He's so passionate about his characters. Um, his love of comic books, I think, even drowns me sometimes. He's like, yeah, well, Brian, you remember X Men, Uncanny X Men seventy four? They said, I'm like, dude, no, I don't. I, I really don't. I know what you're talking about, but no, I don't know the exact line. Um, he's just um, he's so steeped in that lore. And he loves it so much, and he brings that to, to his projects. Um, the preview that you guys are going to see, it's, it's, a, it's a her issue zero as well. So it's a mini issue. You guys are going to love it. I can promise you that. That's awesome. That's awesome. So we got, we got Justice. We got Halliburton. We got her. Anything else coming down the road for Wingless? Um, for yes. Uh, you, you know, we've got, again, like I, I keep saying, there are some, there's some really, really nice surprises. There's one I will not key you guys in on yet i will let you know um i posted some cryptic stuff but uh nightfall is coming so be prepared um that should be october it is going to be something like you have never seen before um nightfall is coming uh we also have a couple more characters um again um we are definitely big on diversity and not people always you know i don't want to say people always say people on the other side of arguments always say something like diversity for diversity's sake right mm -hmm. That is probably one of the most ridiculous phrases I've ever heard. What needs to happen is the diverse set of voices that we actually have in the world need to be given a platform. Um, yeah. Since I have this little itty bitty small platform, um, I want to do that as much as I can. We have a character called Lux, um, which will debut next year. Um, your spunky, you know, teenage coming of age story. I think it's necessary and I think it's necessary to be po told from that point of view. Um, again, we have um, some other things that we have in the works that we're still kind of ironing out, but, but our focus really is going to be on, on just, there is a lot of beautiful art out there uh, that there, there is no doubt. I think the depth of story needs to be just as big. As much as I love Image Comics when it came out, the stories were all over the place. Yeah. I think we all, you know, from each series, you got maybe three or four issues in the beginning that were good, and then it just jumped all over the place. So while you have beautiful art, you had no depth. Wingless Comics is, is about the depth of story. We know that there are artists that could just paint the Sistine Chapel again, and they're gonna bring us beautiful stuff. We wanna honor their talent by telling great stories, and we wanna honor our fans and supporters by telling stories that they can relate to and stories that resonate with them. Yeah, I agree. The, the, the art and the storytelling in indie comics right now, in my opinion, far surpasses what you find from some of the big studios and big uh, labels. Um, it's 100%. wonderful right now. Um, <laughs> yeah. I think you and I have talked briefly through Instagram, maybe at some point about just how, um, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, about telling, telling the stories that we miss from our childhood. Yes. And, yeah, and the stuff like stuff like Milestone Media and just mm -hmm. all those great comics from the '90s. And um, if you miss that, man, you, you can find it in indie right now. Yeah, yeah. You know, one of the things that I find uh, kind of interesting and telling is like um, when Jeff Johns' big run um, and some of the stuff that he did, not in like Green Lantern, but like some of the stuff he did with like Batman and Superman. Mm -hmm. He was bringing back some of those old '70s and, and crazy ideas, which are like pretty fun but they're like a little cartoony yeah but there's such um an over-reliance on not doing that 
that it doesn't make sense, right? Um, everybody can't be Wolverine. Everybody can't be some gruff, hard hero. Like, we, everyone looks nostalgically back at Thundercats. I love Thundercats, right? But if you really go back and watch Thundercats, like, it really doesn't make much sense. It's just kind of fun, and it's, the characters look amazing, and it does some stuff, and blah, blah, blah. But you need that sometimes. Sometimes you need that jumping point to, you know, you've got some great stuff, some cool stuff. And that's why when you do, a, you know, even though it, it, it folded, when you do a Thundercats revival that brings in that depth of story, it's actually amazing. It, yeah. it, it didn't go where it should have for other reasons. Mm -hmm. but, but if you look back on that Thundercats revival, it was an amazing thing. Look at um, Voltron. Look at She-Ra. These yeah. things are, you know, we, we took some really good jumping points from our childhood that were really there for action figures. And now we're adding the stories they always should have had. Yeah. And it's like, oh, man, this stuff is actually pretty amazing. Brandon yeah. Easton's doing um, some G1 stuff, you know, with Transformers. Right. It, it hasn't debuted yet, but I'm, man, I'm biting my nails waiting for it to come out. Because you know it's going to be great. You know he's going to add that depth of story. Yep. You know? Yep. So speaking of diversity, speaking of indie comics, um, I would say that you're part of a resurgence in black indie comics right now. Um, do you have any other indie titles from that genre you're following? I mean, that you haven't already mentioned? <laughs> um, um, uh, Ajiba Anderson's Horseman. I've really just uh, dived yes. into the di dive, dove, dive did. We're just going to make up a word now. Yeah. I've really <laughs> just jumped into that. No, I didn't. I just say jump. Um, um, it, it, it's really expansive and it's great. Um, I'm waiting for uh, Changa and the Jade Obelisk mm -hmm. from uh, Milton Davis and 133. Um, Robert Jeffries' um, Route 3 series, uh, as well as his uh, The Crossing. Okay, anything from Robert Jeffries. So we just, we'll just cover that right there. <laughs> Everything from Robert Jeffries. I'm, I'm in all of that. I'm following that. Um, who else? Um, there are some uh, some uh, some other ones that are set to debut that have not yet. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I there is a, also um, Scarlet Knight, Defender of the Block. I need to pick that up. Yeah. Uh, the the good thing, the one thing that I like about indie comics right now is it gives me that old comic book feeling, even though I'm not going into a store. Yeah. Um, to where I'm always like, oh man, I gotta pick this up. Oh, I gotta pick that up. Oh, I can't do it this week. Okay, I gotta do it next week. You always it always felt like when you used to go into a comic shop, there was always something new to get, and you were like, oh yeah. man, I'm behind the behind the you know, I'm under the gun here. Um, I feel the same way about indie comics. Once I start talking about it, I'm like, oh man, I got to go back through my list and which ones did I miss for next week? Um, and I really love that. I love that about indie comics. There are so many. And like I said, it'll be a disservice if I try to name them all because there are so many that are great um, that I'm really kind of, you know, interested in, interested in checking out. Awesome, man. So, um, hey, if you could do a Justice crossover with any other indie title out there right now, what would it be? <laughs> <laughs> Funny you should ask that. The way I will answer that is Nightfall is coming. Uh-oh. And All right. uh, I will leave that there. All right. Awesome. Awesome. Well, we, uh, we and I especially <laughs> will be impatiently waiting for that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so... There's a lot of people out there. Kickstarter is full of um, indie comics that people are trying to launch. If you could give others any advice who are wanting to get into the industry, what would it be? Um, cultivate your craft. Um, it's very, what, I, what I've learned, even in my own experience, it's very easy to t tell when someone's quote unquote art isn't bad, right? Like, let's say their anatomy is off. Let's say, you know, there, there are uh, technical glitches with their artwork, right? It's, that's, that's very easy to see. Mm -hmm. uh, Rob Leefield is, has dealt with that his entire career. Good or bad, right? He's dealt with yep. it, right? Yeah. Um, it's very easy to see that. It's very easy to see when the lettering is off. It's, being a visual medium, it's very easy to see a lot of things. If a car doesn't work, it's very easy to tell, right? right? One thing that's not very easy to tell is if the craft of your writing and your story forming is not good. You're kind of hit deep in the story before you know that. So my advice would be anyone who is writing, um, one, continue writing. Two, don't be afraid to pick up a book or, 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 or do some courses. There are some very great resources out there. I keep Brian Michael Bendis's uh, comic writing book handy. I keep Frank Miller's, uh, some of his notes, because I like old Frank Miller, mm -hmm. um, handy. Um, I keep, um, it's not called writing, uh, writing comics uh, for DC Comics. I keep that handy. Mm -hmm. um, re in order to be a writer, I believe you have to be a good reader. Stephen King said that. Alan Moore said that. Like a ton of people said that. I think it's very, very true. Um, hone your craft. That's going to be the first part. The next part is being be realistic about the budget. People think that 
comics are inexpensive. I realize that they're only sold for about five bucks, but they are not inexpensive to create. No. Um, you're going to spend quite a bit of money, so be realistic about your budget. Um, and the next thing, just honestly, in every step, research what you do. Don't just go ask someone else who's there. Ask them how they got the information. And if somebody says, hey, man, Google such and such, don't get mad. Don't be afraid to Google it. Uh, I spend hours on Google, even, you know, quote, unquote, being in the industry, man, I'm always there. How do I do this? How do I do that? Take your time, plan out. If you're going to do a Kickstarter campaign, don't try and launch it a month after you've made your, you know, made your ID, your login. No, yeah. take some time, research, do it step by step because it's going to take time. It's going to take a process. And remember that, that whatever it is, it's going to take time. Be realistic about your goal. $10,000 for my comic book and no one knows you. Don't do that to yourself because you're just going to hurt yourself. Be realistic about your goal. Set yeah. some goals and, and you can achieve them. Things that are achievable are things you can tick off the list. No one thought people could run under a four minute mile until somebody put that four minute mile on their list and said, I'm going to beat it. You know, yeah. so make achievable goals, push through the boundaries. And, and again, do your research, do your due diligence. Um, and, and if something's not right, if it is your letters or your art or your whatever, learn to communicate that to your team. You just make a stronger team when you can say, hey, I don't like this based on this. I need it to look this way. I need it to look that way. And then they can talk to you. Hey, hey man, you might be wrong, you know, and, and take that into account too. I want to see it this way. You might be wrong. Sometimes your artist is going to come with a panel that you envisioned one way and they're going to do it a different way and it's going to blow your mind. Let them blow your mind. Yeah. Yeah. That's great, man. That's, that's awesome advice. That's, um, I hope people watch these interviews all the way to the end because some of the best advice for people wanting to come get in the industry happen at the end of these interviews we've been doing. So it's, yes. that's great advice, man. Thank so you, tell man. people one more time, um, where can they find justice? Where can they find wingless comics at? Okay, so you can download and link through every, all of our social um, through www.winglessent.com. That's winglessent.com. Um, our Facebook is actually at Wingless Comics or Justice Comics, unfortunately, because Facebook is, is mean like that. <laughs> um, our Instagram is uh, at Wingless Comics, uh, as is our um twitter uh we are all over uh everywhere you can search my name uh brian j lambert i come up I, i'm i'm pretty <laughs> noticeable I, I would i would say um again you can download justice issue zero for free on uh, winglessent.com and get a peek in the universe a peek into some of the things that are hiding you know just around the corner for our our hero um again we're going to be all over social media check back in kicks at kickstarter um, Justice Issue Zero, I mean, sorry, Justice Issue One, Something Wicked, um, and uh, yeah, that, that, that's all of our that's all of our tags. Uh, we'll we'll be here with you guys as much as we can. I think we're just going to come and start bombarding your studio. <laughs> just yeah. hey, that's cool, um, man. That's cool. Holding up posters <laughs> in the background, um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, yeah, that's us, man. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, Brian, thank you so much for joining us today, guys. Check out that Kickstarter. By the time we post this, it'll be just about time for that Kickstarter to go live. So head on over, get, get informed when it launches and download Justice Issue in Merzir to get your feet wet. I guarantee you, you'll love it and want to support that Kickstarter campaign. Thanks, Brian. Thank you for having me.